Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're gonna to be doing something I've only done one other time and it wasn't caught on film. And that is using a roller to put my paint on. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we get started with the video, I want to, if you're new here, introduce you to the Barnyard. It is my coaching membership group. I'm gonna list all the benefits here not going to stand here and bore you for too terribly long, but if you're interested, go check it out. Here's the piece we're going to be working on. This is a client piece. It is a golden oak table, and we're going to be staining the top and painting the base. Let me show you. I get asked this so often, and if I can, I will. So let me show you how I get nice clean lines and don't have a bunch of paint getting on everything else underneath. So when I can, I will remove the base from the tabletop. I've done this with dining sets, coffee tables. Fortunately, this one was one you could just unscrew and there you go. So this makes my job a little bit easier because I won't have paint all over the base of the table. It'll look like it's natural state. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started, but I realized I have a teeny little problem. I don't have any little mini roller trays because I don't roll very often. I'm gonna take a quick break, go look around my shop and see if I have anything that I can make work. But this is what we're gonna to use today. These are Stallmeister. I've never used these. I've used their brand brushes and they're fabulous. Never used their rollers, so I'm super excited to give this a go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. When all else fails, a paper plate will work. So we're gonna go ahead today, pour our paint into our paper plate. These are microfiber rollers and they're supposedly gonna leave us a flawless finish. So let's see what happens. All right, so a question you might be wondering is, don't I have to prime this? No, you can clean it, scuff sand it like you saw me do, wipe it down and it's ready to go. Now, you will want to prime when you have a bleeder. Now this possibly could bleed, you never know, but it's not likely. I've done hundreds and hundreds of pieces without priming. So we're gonna skip that step today because it's not always necessary and see what happens. I have to say, this is way outside the comfort box for me, but I'm going with it. We're gonna see what happens. I will tell you always, first coat is never pretty. I mean, look at that. That is not pretty, but it's gonna get pretty. The thing I'm finding with the roller is, first of all, it would help if I had the right tools, but offloading your roller is kind of key in this situation. You don't wanna put too much product on that is gonna go ahead and give you that texture. I can see as this is drying down, and this is still not completely dry, that it doesn't have a lot of texture. So I'm pretty happy about that. I could not have picked a more difficult piece in the regard of having all the curves. That's not easy to hit with the roller, but let me just get in really close on the leg here. I'm not unhappy with the way that that looks. So, you know, we'll see. Let's let this set up and we'll come back in about an hour and do the second coat. So I went ahead and repeated the second coat. I did that off camera because I figured no reason in putting you guys through the same process. It's exactly, exactly the same. All I did was wrap up my roller in between coats to keep it you know, from drying out. And then I started over again. So let me show you coat two. I'm actually pleasantly surprised, but there's a few things that I have to go back and fix. On this particular piece that there's so many curves, um, I have a couple like on the edges where it looks like there's too much paint that built up, like caked up. And this is a learning curve when you start using a roller. So the other thing is there is slight texture. Now, not the way it looks, but the way it felt. So I did sand in between coats with a fine grit sanding pad. I'm gonna pop everything in the show notes so you know exactly what I used in the video. But yeah, let me show you. Let me just show you where we're at. Okay, so here is second coat. Now it's not dry yet, but you can probably already see what I'm referring to. 
right here. So when I was rolling the underside, um, I didn't, you know, check my sides and yeah, there's a little bit of that buildup or goopiness here as well. And again, that's just user, uh, I won't call it error, we'll just call it user learning curve. So I also used a brush because the roller just cannot get in these areas. So what I would suggest doing is if you're gonna go with the roller, you're gonna have to use a brush too to get into some of the fine little crevices and detail. What am I gonna do to get rid of this? Well, as soon as this dries, I will take some 320 grit sandpaper and sand those little areas down and then just roll over them. But I have to say, I wanna get in really close so you guys can see the finish. It's actually really, really good. Now, when I was doing it first coat, it was a little scary looking, but I'm not unhappy with the way it came out. I just have to fix these little areas. Okay, so what did I think? Total transparency? Yeah, I'm not converting to rolling. I'm gonna stick to spraying. It's what I do. I feel like a few things. A, I feel like I use a little more paint than I normally would, which is funny because people ask me all the time, don't you have a lot of waste with a sprayer? No, you can scrape with a spatula the inside of your cup, the top of your lid, and really the only waste is like the tiny little bit amount that's left behind and what's in the gun itself. So I don't have a lot of waste. I don't feel like this went as far as if when I spray. The other thing that um, I did sand in between coats and the reason I did that was not because of the look, but the feel, and that can happen when you're brushing, spraying, or rolling. And for me, I felt a little clumsy with the roller, but that's just me, because I'm not used to working with it, so that would just have to be something I get used to doing. I just don't think I'm going to. The last thing, it took me way more time. It took me way more time to paint this with a roller than it did the sprayer. And again, I'm gonna blame that on myself, because I'm not experienced using a roller. So for those of you that want to roll, I will tell you this roller itself, the Stallmeister roller was amazing. So that part I will agree with. I've used different rollers, not on furniture, but they're not all created equal. This one really, really minimizes the look of texture. And I have to say it put on a really decent coat and a really decent second coat. All right, you guys, that is it. We are at the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Wasn't that fun to test out a new tool? I love to spray. I'm going to be the first one to tell you that. But it's wonderful to provide other options and test other things out so you know that you have choices. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you go hit that subscription button as well as the post notification bell so that you know when all of my latest videos are released. And being a part of my YouTube channel by being a subscriber helps support my channel and keep me going. I so appreciate it. And if you have any positive comments or questions, make sure you leave them down below as I will always answer your questions. I love engaging with you. All right, everyone. I'll catch you on the next video.